I don't know that we knew too much about it the first year because we were pretty raw. You yeah. know, Joe had to convince me that we were <laughs> even going to have hockey tickets. He had been to hockey games in Omaha many, many, many years ago, and I'd never attended a hockey game before. And he says, okay, I'm going to get hockey tickets. I found out that they're going to have a team in Lincoln, and just go to one game, and if you don't like it, then you don't have to go. And I'm going, you're going to make me go to hockey? And I was just making all game. these... Just one game. All these... You have to go to one. Strange noises, you know. And so anyway, went to the hockey game, and that was it. I was done. I don't... We don't miss hockey games. We very, very seldom have ever. Maybe on one hand you can count how many times we've ever missed a hockey game. Yes. When it came up where they were looking for billets, again, put our little name in the hat. Everybody put their name in the hat. and We didn't quite make the first cut, which that was fine because life happened. Again, my mother-in-law moved in with us, which was wonderful. And then um, three years ago, we purchased this home. And which is 25 minutes from the ice box, where the old house was literally six minutes away. But anyway, but we we came. We were looking for a home with the idea of being able to have a player live with us. And this is before we were even approved as billets. We had this in mind, you know, the bathrooms, the bedrooms, and all those types of things. So we're approaching now our fourth season. We have had 11 players now come through our home. A couple of times we've had three at a time and they're all a lot of fun they've all got all their stories and uh, we're just going to continue on but that's kind of what happened it's been a long progression a lot of years in between when we began as just season ticket holders to now actually being billet parents I, I thought it'd be kind of neat to be able to get an insight having players stay with you uh, find out what's going on that just the general public doesn't know about. Um, so that was one of the things that I wanted to do. We enjoy it. We enjoy having them. It's like having another uh, member of the family living with you. It's it's oh, it's terrible. When, I mean, when we know that one particular player's got well, a bad shoulder, and you, it's, it's an upper body injury. Well, we know what's really wrong with him, but you don't want to tell the other team because that's what the, they'll pick on then. And so when they get hit, oh no. It's worse, worse than having your own child out there, I think. More I've bitten so. off a few nails. Yes, I have. I've sat there and gone like this and snap. And, oh crap, or don't hurt him, or whatever the case might be. Or get that goal, or make that block, you know, take that shot. <laughs> Woe we've, be it to somebody been... that would criticize a player, and it happened to be one of ours. <laughs> and she going to jump the guy and say, that's my boy, don't mess with him. I <laughs> have said that. <laughs> yes, she has. For me, it wasn't as tough because I didn't have time to think about it. When the season's winding down and you know pretty soon so-and-so is not going to be, I probably won't see him again, then it just kind of builds up, for me anyway, builds up and oh, builds yeah. up and, and then I have to take him to the airport, for instance, or help him out with his stuff and that's, you know, that's really hard for me. This time we weren't sure that okay maybe a week or two and we'll be back at it you know so it didn't really strike that hardly hard on me I don't believe I, I agree with that I agree with that mostly um, we didn't have time to think about it the boys didn't have time to think about it the young men I should quit calling them boys the young men didn't have time to think about it um, all they knew was is that it was time to go home because there was something goofy happening in the world if you don't, if you don't feel sad when they leave, you're not doing it right. So it's by the fact that we are connected with those kids, if you will, we want them to do good and we want them to succeed, be successful, um, you're doing it right. And so that made me feel better. So I cry every time. Several years ago when Joe was still working prior to his pre-retirement, he was in Illinois for three years. and. We would travel back and forth between Lincoln and Illinois to see each other, and he would come here to Lincoln for meetings and things of, those, of that nature. Well, of course we had our season tickets. We never gave up. And Joe's mom, Fran, would be my hockey date. And so um, people got to know Fran, um, from the parking lot attendants to the people that work the elevators to you name it. And so years go by, people know Fran, Joe retires, we're home, 
and Fran moves in with us. And by this time, she's, I think she was 95 or 96 when she moved in with us. When she was 99 years old, when she was 99 years old, um, we were getting ready for dinner, and um, she had gone into the restroom and she had fallen down. Turns out she had broken her hip. And so she had her hip replaced. Well, Mickey, who was the ticket sales lady there for the Lincoln Stars at the time, Mickey knew about all of these things. And uh, Mickey was so kind as to bring over three or four hockey players, one of them being Brad Hawkinson, over to our house. Now, at our house, Fran was in her hospital bed. Um, she was under the influence of morphine. She was asleep. We don't know really if the players, or if she heard the players, we're thinking that she did. In our minds, we're positive that she did. But um, she was laying in her hospital bed in her room, and the players were there with Mickey, and we visited for 45 minutes anyway. to an hour about anything and everything. And the players were phenomenal. They were respectful. Um, they were they acting were so like they, they, she could hear them. You know, they weren't talking to her, but they were. It was conversation. Yeah, they, 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 very mature. they were so respectful and considerate that that's part of why being a billet, in my view and in my mind, is kind of a payback because the STARS organization had such fine young men in those days. Well, now too, but I'm just saying at that particular place in life that was so important and it was so pertinent and it was I was so impressed with how they responded to that and can never be grateful enough for that to Mickey those young men and the stars organization um, for doing that because as it turns out uh, I believe it was the day after or maybe two days after that stars visit she passed away. It was the next day. It was the next day she passed away. Yeah. But she lived a yeah. long life, very happy life, a very sweet lady. I love her, I miss her. Anybody that ever met her, hopefully there's somebody who's watching this that kind of remembers Fran, the little lady that was in the wheelchair that they like used the to fights. bring over. Like, like the fights and used to come over and get up there on the elevator and just kind of do this thing when the guys would start fighting, you know. But she was very sports-minded, very athletic herself in her youth. And uh, miss her very much, but thank you to the stars because that's a memory that will always be there and will always, always be appreciated. Yeah.